Hi, I'm Mrs. Lahotsky, one of the kindergarten teachers, and today we're going to read chapter 23 from Wish. On Jackie's last day in Colby, she and Bertha sat together at the sewing machine in my room and talked about boys and clothes and movie stars while they worked on a zipper. I took Wishbone out in the yard and pulled weeds from between the marigolds beside the garden shed while he slept in the sun. I hated thinking about Jackie getting on that bus to Raleigh, going back to her happy life, painting her fingernails with Carol Lee, dating Scooter the paintball champion, maybe even going to beauty school. Each yank of a weed was like a jab in my heart as I thought about her leaving me behind. By the time Jackie and Bertha finished that zipper, there wasn't a single weed left in that yard and my heart ached so bad I wanted to cry. Later that day, me and Jackie and Wishbone went down to the Odomses so Jackie could say goodbye. The boys sat on the porch steps looking like they were going to a funeral. Y'all better come visit me in Raleigh, Jackie said. She threw her arms out wide. Everybody, we'll have the best time ever. They nodded solemnly and Cotton swiped at tears. If I'm still working at that old waffle house, y'all come by and I'll throw in a couple of chocolate chip waffles for free. Cotton perked up. Chocolate chip waffles? Jackie nodded. Yep, and I'll make sure they put extra chips in yours, okay? He grinned. I bet Charlie's gonna miss you, Howard said. Jackie put her arm around my shoulder. Well, I'm gonna miss her too, but she can come visit. Visit, I said. I'll be going back there to live. I rubbed my hand down Wishbone's back. You know, when Mama gets her feet on the ground, I added. Jackie looked down at her lap. Wishbone's tail swished back and forth in the dry red dirt. Well then, Jackie said, I reckon it's time for me to get my hugs in. She held her arms out. Each of those boys gave her a quick, awkward hug. Then Mrs. Odom ran out of the house and said, it was just a joy and blessing having you here in Colby, Jackie. Then she and Jackie hugged and we headed back home. That night, Bertha made a special supper of meatloaf and lima beans fried green tomatoes, and sweet potato pie. Wishbone laid beside my chair waiting for somebody to toss him a piece of meatloaf every now and then. I have to admit that we'd spoiled him rotten and turned him into a world-class beggar. After we sat on the porch for a while, me and Jackie went back to my room. I brushed Wishbone while Jackie packed, stuffing her shorts and things into her duffel bag and telling me again how lucky I was to have such a nice place to live. I watched her gather her nail polish and toss it into the duffel bag, and I started to feel more pitiful by the minute. What's going to happen to me? I wanted to ask her, but I didn't. After we turned the lights out, I stared up at the ceiling, watching the shadows of the dogwood tree dance in the moonlight. Then I took a deep breath and said, can I go back to Raleigh with you? The silence that followed nearly swallowed me up. I could feel my heartbeat in my chest and Wishbone's warm breath against my cheek. Then, Jackie got out of bed and sat beside my sleeping bag. Nothing's gonna change, Charlie, she said. I used to think it would, but now I don't. Scrappy is gonna keep being Scrappy, and Mama is gonna keep being Mama, and you and I are on our own. No magic wand is gonna fix things. I didn't wanna believe that, so I pushed those words away so I wouldn't have to think about them. Then I said, did you know Mama left us when we were little? Just ran off with a garbage bag full of clothes to start a new life? Jackie heaved a big sigh. Yes, I did know that. How'd you know? When you're seven years old and your mama waltzes out the door with not so much as a goodbye, well, that's something you don't forget. How come you never told me, I said. She put her hand on my back and rubbed in little circles. Because I didn't want you to hate Mama, she said. Do you hate Mama? No, nah, she pushed my hair behind my ear. I don't like her very much, but I don't hate her. But why can't I live with you? I asked so quiet it was almost a whisper. Jackie hugged her knees. Charlie, I can't live with Carol Lee forever. I'm saving my money and me and Wileen Jarvis are getting an apartment together. I can't take care of you like Gus and Bertha can, she said. Shoot, I can barely take care of myself. We sat in silence for a minute. Then Jackie said, you got a good life here, Charlie. You got Gus and Bertha loving you and treating you like a princess. You got all those Odoms thanking the good Lord for you. Then there's Howard, 
the nicest friend you could ever want. You got these beautiful mountains and a garden and a porch to sit on that's like sitting on the side of heaven. Wishbone kicked his legs and let out a little woof like he was having a doggy dream. Jackie rubbed his stomach and a dog that loves you like nobody's business. I looked at Wishbone and thought about Bertha saying how dogs love you no matter what and my heart nearly burst. Don't hate me, Charlie, Jackie said. Hate her? I loved everything about her. I loved the old Jackie and the new Jackie. Why couldn't I tell her that? I guess I hadn't had much practice saying I love you. So I just sat there in the darkness with Wishbone twitching in his sleep beside me and said, I do like those blue streaks in your hair. 